स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello, welcome back to NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. Um, we are in uh, the series of lectures entitled Cultural Studies. We have completed two modules already comprising 20 lectures and I welcome you to module 3 which is entitled Sites of Cultural Studies. As always, let us do a recap. In module 2, which was entitled Key Concepts, we looked at a few um, uh, foundational concepts, a few terms and ideas in the field of cultural studies and you will remember that a few among them are subjectivity, identity, ideology, gender, representation, discourse, etcetera. We, uh, we talked about each of these, uh, though I uh, must admit that it was done at an elementary level. Um, since these lectures are being designed for students of engineering colleges, where um, the humanities and social sciences are taught as elective subjects. Nevertheless, I hope these, uh, even the discussion at this level would be helpful for all of us. Uh, we also saw that concepts are ideas which have a certain degree of abstraction uh, simply because they we, we need uh, the degree of abstraction or abstractness um, if you will, uh, so that we are able to apply these to various situations, contexts and cultural phenomena. We then um, went on to discuss um, gender which is the post feminist more or less a post feminist for post structuralist. Um, idea or formulations on gender and uh, you will recall that we devoted two lectures to gender and uh, the last lecture on gender uh, featured primarily the you know some of the formulations given to us by uh, the peer theorist Judith Butler in which for instance we saw that she talks about gender as being an illusion okay, of an abiding gendered self that there is actually um, nothing ontologically you know a male or female or masculine or feminine. We are uh, all the time in a state of performativity of, um, of gender roles and gender expectations. Then we also saw that Butler and theorists from um, the queer and uh, post feminist schools of thought talks uh, also talk about multiple modes of femininity and masculinity which are potentially enactable where sex and gender are seen as being malleable at least in principle okay if not always in practice there's always a potential of um, sex and gender being malleable or manipulable or changeable then we so, that some of the, the main contributions of Judith Butler ha, uh, have been a that gender is performative okay, uh, meaning performance and role playing and these performances through repetition and reiteration okay, um, become established or instantiated in society so that they seem natural and these are often the results of sexual regimes or um, you know re regime again with the you know, uh, you know with the whole resonance of uh, a rule. So, as if you know there are certain um, norms sexuality is seen to be normative um, at least you know um, uh, at least in an overt sort of way, but Butler says that behind these normative practices are always what she says are potentially enactable um, uh, gender roles. 
Then we, we saw that there is a shift from the older school or what we call the traditional school of gender studies which saw sex as simply a biological identity. Okay? And, then move, uh, uh, and now we move on to sex being seen as some, a regulatory ideal, okay? something that is normative, something that is a stylization. So, we saw that the sex gender binary was broken in the post feminist and queer movements. Now, well, let us talk about what we are going to go, what, what you know is going to be with us for uh, the next at least 9 to 10 lectures. And um, I have entitled this module Sites, Sites of Cultural Studies. So by sites, we mean uh, simply put, you know, we, we can state it as a question, is that where does it happen? Okay? All these things that we have been talking about, representation, subjectivity, you know, identity, gender, all these things, um, where are they played out? Okay? You will recall that we had said that uh, at the level of concepts, there is a certain, um, a certain uh, abstract you know, quality that is desirable while talking about concepts, but now we come to sites or what we may call, please look at this slide, locations. Okay? Locations, where, is, where, where are all these things actually played out, where are all these things actually located? So, uh, let us read from here. If cultural forces inform our everyday lives, where are these located? What are the sites? Okay? Uh, for instance, Butler says here that there is definitely a move from studying structures, okay? uh, studying frameworks, studying models, studying abstractions to what she says here, contingent sites of power and hegemony. Okay? So, there is, there is a move in, you know, in, in cultural studies from, from structure to contingent sites. Uh, we also have interestingly a journal entitled sites, okay? sites of cultural studies, which you if you are interested you may look up. So, what are we going to look at, at mod in module 3? In module 3, we are going to look at several, uh, several uh, you know sites as it were, where culture happens, where culture you know, where all these concepts that we have learnt may be applied and among these, I will just mention a few of these, among these are the body, okay, which is the topic of uh, today's lesson, space, time, globalization, development, ethnicity, etcetera. So, we will be looking at uh, you know uh, quite a variety of sites where uh, we can see um, you know all the you know the we can, we can see that where these concepts and whatever we have theorized, you know the theories we have talked about all this while may be applied. Okay, so, let us come to the first site, which is the body. The key sources, source texts in this lecture, uh, from where I will be you know giving you quotations, from where I will uh, be you know, um, from where I will be talking about the, the theorization of these sites, are again Danny Cavallaro's critical and cultural theory, Michel Foucault's important work, Discipline and Punish, Mike Featherstone's edited book, The Body, Social Process and Cultural Theory, Chris Barker's Cultural Studies Theory and Practice, a book that has been with us all this while, uh, The Sage Handbook of Cultural Studies, also by Chris Barker, and uh, Yana Savic, uh, Key's Queering Foucault and the Subject of Feminism. Now, these are obviously realized by no means the only books that you may consult or even I may consult while talking about body, but for the purposes of our present lesson, let us uh, look at these texts. Now, um, we, we all have a body, okay? the, uh, you know that the body is, um, has been a subject of uh, study uh, since probably philosophy began. Okay? We are very familiar with uh, uh, Descartes, the French philosopher, uh, with whom modern philosophy is supposed to have begun. Okay? Uh, Descartes' uh, dualism, which you call Cartesian dualism, which is that the mind and the body 
are supposed to be in Descartes schema to different substances or uh, you know substrates that meet in the pineal gland. Um, today of course, the paradigm is one of embodiment where uh, the mind body dualism receives less importance okay, in, in, in the theory and philosophy. Okay. Today is a philosophy of embodiment where the mind emanates from the body, the brain. So, let us look at this uh, as uh, you, know, so, you know some beginning points may say embodiment affects perception and interpretation. Okay. Uh, other schools of thought, the opposite school of thought may say that perception and interpretation are nothing, have nothing to do uh, with perception and interpretation. But today we, you know, the, you know, after brain studies, after neurosciences, etcetera, okay, today we are back to, uh, uh, you know, um, material, uh, materialist, not materialistic or materialist way of looking at perception and interpretation, where everything emanates from the brain that, that which is a part of the body. So, embodiment affects perception and interpretation and therefore, it affects identity and knowledge formation, encoding social values and changes. So, see the body is here uh, seen as well the prime vehicle for you know through which it is not something you know that that was delegated always to a second level for instance in the binary of mind slash body okay body is always the unprivileged term okay but in uh, current um, uh, you know uh, in current philosophy in current studies of cultural studies we give body say the primary importance as a theorizing entity now uh, when we frame the body thus, okay, this way of framing, uh, framing the body establishes one fact that bodies are you know uh, related to let us look at this structures of power okay, uh, as well as desire. Right? Now, looking at the body from this, this uh, perspective uh, also shows that structures of power and desire, they also lead to meaning formation and knowledge. The second uh, way of theorizing the body is not simply framing the body or, or agreeing that the body is you know uh, central to perception and interpretation or uh, that <coughs> sorry the body may be framed. The other way of looking at it is please look at this body image. So, let us look at this the body as a cultural image is variable. The important point here is the body image uh, that emerges in cultural studies is one that is variable okay. that is again like gender like sex the body okay. uh, this corporal body its cultural image is not static it is fixed it is flexible. Okay. The body image includes also the space which surrounds the body okay. it is not just the you know um, uh, the border of your body, what is just outside of your body, okay, that is the space which surrounds the body, that is also important in our body image. And thirdly, any one individual is bound to produce different body images, depending on the distance she places between him, herself or himself and other people. Okay. So, what did we learn from, from this point? A is that as a cultural image, Okay. You may feel that you, 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 know, you have a body of a certain kind, okay, which is your body, but from as a cultural image, okay, as so an entity in culture, body is variable. Why? For instance, it says here the body will also go beyond its physical margins and include, respond to, taken from the space which surrounds it. And second, uh, even a single individual okay, is bound to produce different body images depending also on you know how he or she places himself or herself not only to the surroundings, but also to other people. So, you see how now there is a there is a sophistication to thinking about the body here, which does not relegate the body to a second place. Okay, so, um, the word body of course, comes uh, in is related to the Latin word, uh, Latin word root of 
uh, corporeal or incorporation. Okay, and um, you see here, see here in this slide that corporeality or incorporation, okay, is not an entity which is discrete. It's related, of course, it is related to human beings as being the, the vehicle of human beings, but it is also related to objects, ideas, political, cultural and economic structures and we shall see in a way uh, how. There is again an ensemble of ideological practices that organize diverse entities into cultural wholes in a bid to give a certain, um, you know, a certain illusion as Butler would say to cultural stability. We shall see now these are the, uh, how, how these points apply specifically to the body. Now, the most important person perhaps here, okay, it would be quite safe to say in, you know, in theorizing the body has been uh, the French philosopher who, who has, who we have had occasion to talk about, whose works we have referred to in a couple of lectures before. And this is his idea of docile bodies, which many of you may be familiar with. Now, um, I am coming to him at this point via the, an essay by Yana Savichki, Queering Foucault and the Subject of Feminism, where she refers to Foucault's important term biopar. Okay? Now, let us read this uh, quotation. Foucault's term biopar refers to two interrelated forms of power associated with the, science, with the emergence of the sciences of man and the institutions related to them. Now, biopower first is disciplinary power, which targets individual bodies and operates in the context of institutional practices such as hierarchical observation and examination. Okay. Power of different disciplines that began to be formed um, of, of from the 17th century onwards, okay, these are the powers of disciplines which at the same time have disciplinary power, that is power to discipline people in and make them think about themselves, about others through, you know, the paradigms of the disciplines. So, first disciplinary power targets individual bodies and operates in the context of institution, this is important, institutional practices such as observe hierarchical observation and examination. B, the second that is regulatory power focuses on the species body and is inscribed in policies and the interventions governing the health and welfare of population. This is bio power. Okay? Uh, A, which is the disciplinary uh, you know, practices or the disciplinary power that emanates from disciplinary practices and secondly, the regulatory power which are which, is, which have to do as we have seen here through policies, okay, through uh, you know health, uh, ideas of health through policies related to health okay, and uh, interventions by the government in a bid to ensure the welfare of the people. So, this is the power that uh, inheres in any authority okay, uh, as far as the body is concerned, as far as bio power is concerned. Foucault says that the individual body, okay, the individual body, um, it is just an illusion and we think that our bodies are ours over which we have full control. Okay. He says on the other hand that the individual body is not something that is, you know, that belongs completely to an individual. It is, he says, a social instrument okay. and it is a malleable again, malleable, changeable, a manipulable and docile, this is an important word with Foucault, docile tool of productivity. Okay. So, we find here that the, the idea that we possess, so to speak, just because we are, embodied, we are in a body or we are the body, it is still an illusion to think that we are in full possession of the, of the body. Within this theorizing, the body is very much a social affair. Okay, it is a social entity, as it says, it is even a social instrument, right, which is manipulable and which is a docile tool of various kind of productive activities. In his very important book, Discipline and Punish, uh, this is the shift that Foucault points to. Okay. Uh, the, the body is uh, here seen as a target of punishment 
through incarceration. Uh, when you refer to the prison systems, for instance, okay, the body becomes a target of punishment. In this, this is the way in which the body is a social instrument. Okay, instrument for productivity is also the body is also a also belongs to society. The body as a target of punishment through incarceration. And second, here, the body is something to be prescribed. Okay. It is something to be prescribed and controlled through, look at this word, the normalizing, the normalizing techniques and discourses of the human sciences in the 19th century. Right? Now, as the body as a target, uh, as a direct target of punishment through prisons, through incarceration, okay, now becomes, right, now becomes a prescribed body. It's not a punished body; it becomes a prescribed body, a controlled body. So, uh, so much so that you you do not realize that there is a con is a control here. That there is a prescription of how to go about our bodies, how to maintain, you know, the health of a body. What is health in the first place? Is something that is prescribed by what he calls here uh, the normalizing techniques and discourses of the 19th century human sci human sciences. You follow? So. Again, what was uh, an overt, a visible control, okay? uh, almost sometimes a violent control of the body, which always is a social instrument, okay? as Foucault has said, okay? not just in the 19th century. Now, there is a shift, therefore, from that sort of a, of a very visible control to uh, you know, control through prescription, control through how things ought to be, okay? uh, through a prescriptive, through a normative and through a controlling discourse, okay, which is again as we seen in another slide, uh, which is nothing but biopower. These are regulatory practices and uh, disciplinary practices. This is uh, an important uh, core point in uh, you know, the understanding of body in cultural studies, particularly through Michel Foucault's discipline and punish. Next, uh, according to Foucault, discipline produces subjected and practiced bodies. Look at these practiced bodies, which are, uh, which may be called the docile bodies. We, the, we, we therefore, there are certain practice in the sense that these practices, right, these practices, which he calls in this, in the previous slide, which he calls, uh, you know, the normalizing techniques and discourses, uh, which prescribe what the body should be. These are practice bodies, bodies that come through practices and at the same time, okay, the bodies that are practiced, so to speak, that are lived out, that are maintained through these discourses, after having been informed by these discourses and hence they are docile bodies. Why docile? They are docile because they are already, as I said, this is this word, subjected to discipline. This, this is a very beautiful way to put it here. Therefore, he says there is the creation of a new political anatomy, and you obviously will mark, uh, you know, it rhymes with political economy, which is, uh, of course, a much more common phrase in cultural studies and in economic and political social theory. But he says that there, this kind of, uh, you know, a regulatory, discursive, uh, disciplinary uh, way of understanding the, you know, the body gives rise to a new political anatomy. Anatomy, the body is, is uh, kind of made political. Okay, there are issues of power over the body come in. That is why he says there is a new mechanics of power as far as the body is concerned. Um, in a book on Michel Foucault by two well-known Foucault scholars, Herber, Herbert L. Dreyfus and Paul Rabino. Uh, they give us these points. They said, "How now? Uh, we've only talked about that these are there are practices. Okay, uh, there are uh, there have been the creation of certain human sciences in the 19th century. Now we in this slide we we get here the you know the actual uh, way in which these have happened. A is that something we have talked about. I think in gender, which was the hysterization of women's bodies. Okay." Hysteria was seen as a condition that emanated uh, from, you know, from the body, a mental condition um, that emanated from the body, which root was the body, and where women were seen particularly as suffering from hysteria, as compared to men. And there was, uh, there were several techniques by which, uh, you know, in the 19th century, by which uh, hysteria was understood, and therefore the the cure of hysteria was also based on 
such a gendered view of, uh, you know, of the affliction, right. So, hysterization of women's bodies, this is the way the body, the female body was made docile, okay, the female body was made subjected to the discourse of medical science, to the discourse of hysteria. And of course, we know today that this is not the case, the entire you know way of tackling it and the entire way of even diagnosing it was wrong. But nevertheless, in the 19th century, uh, women's bodies was sub, you know was made docile, were made docile, sorry, were made, made docile and subjected okay, through hysteria. Uh, second again is uh, it happened through the socialization of procreative behavior. Okay? Um, sexual behavior activity that led to procreation was not simply or not a simple choice of two individuals. Okay? It, was, it, it was made, it was socialized so to speak, that is a procreating body. Uh, the procreating body was uh, or was socialized, again was made docile okay, through certain um, uh, certain prescriptive behaviors which the procreative body was supposed to follow. Okay. So, then next there was the psychiatria, uh, psychiatrization of perverse pleasure, uh, pleasures, uh, you know of deviate uh, of so called sexual deviations and uh, people who were found to indulge in sexual deviations uh, were uh, sort of um, you know were sort of uh, appropriated in by the discipline of psychiatry okay as uh, you know uh, in a bid to make or to normalize those practices to bring them to a certain uh, kind of understanding of normal practices okay and fourth to do also with the church okay was the discourse of a discourse and technology of the confession right so confessions about the body confessions about in you know certain indulgences with the body, okay. Uh, confessions of not, uh, you know, having practiced the regulated, monitored, or accepted or prescribed way of behaving as far as the body was concerned. So, as Dreyfus and Rabino have shown, they are, they were, these are some of the ways in which, uh, you know, the 19th century human sciences appropriated the body. So, till now, what have we seen? We have seen that the body as which we may uh, have understood as something, uh, uh, as something that is ours over something that is simply, uh, you know, an, uh, uh, a complex organism which is completely biological over oh, and where, you know, thinking uh, and activities and, you know, economic production are social, those binaries are gone here and we are looking at particularly at this, um, you know, in this jun at this juncture, we are looking at the body as a social instrument, right. Then quickly look at an essay by Brian S. Turner in an edited book by Mike uh, Featherson, uh, the book being The Body, Social Process and Cultural Theory. Uh, there is an interesting point, he talks about the body in anthropology. Okay, you know anthropology is a study of man, anthropos is man, logi or logos is study of. The Let us see how Turner shows what the body is in anthropology. Um, in the philosophy of anthropology, the body was seen in relation to an ontology of man, okay, that there was something essential, right. It was seen as if it was, it was something essential or an ontology, something that defined in an ontological way what man was. An embodiment and, and an ontology were related in this, uh, in, in this way of studying the body and there was the relation between culture and nature, uh, the point of disjun disjunction and uh, for instance there was the end of indiscriminate sexuality, Darwinian thinking, sociobiology and the centrality of culture to all aspects of being human. This was how the body was looked at in anthropology. Barker in the Sage Dictionary of Cultural Studies says this, the body is com commonly understood to be the physical flesh and bones of an organism. However, within cultural studies, it is commonly argued that the body has been stylized and performed by the workings of culture, making the idea of the body as a pre-social, 
pre-cultural object impossible to sustain. Um, Barker's words here summarize what we have done so far. Okay, again, as I have already stated, the body was seen uh, and understood to be simply flesh and bones, simply organic. Okay, but uh, we now understand the body is something that has been stylized. Okay, now gender, the body is uh, also performed in culture. Uh, the body is performed not, you know. Uh, completely by us as agents, we perform the body, okay. we, uh, the body is stylized by us, but through the, uh, you could even say the injunctions of cultural prescriptions and practices. The body has been stylized and performed by the workings of culture, making the idea of the body as something that is pre-social, before social. Okay, before entering the social realm, uh, thinking of the body as a pre-cultural object, it is impossible, it is most untenable today, given so many you know, sophisticated theorizations, it is no longer possible in any way to look at the body as a pre-social, pre-cultural object. Therefore, we have in this schema, uh, the organic body, which you would say belongs to an older paradigm. Okay. And the performed body, which is the new paradigm, right? the new, new paradigm in today in philosophy and cultural studies, okay. the move therefore, the shift from the organic to the performed. Now, we see by now, we have looked at several things, we have looked at uh, we have looked at the body in culture, began, we began with the body in culture, we talked about uh, body image and the fact that the body image is not limited only, only uh, you know to the margins or boundaries of the body. Okay. Then uh, we looked at uh, bio power as given by Foucault, we looked at uh, you know the docile bodies uh, etcetera. Now, we come to um, a concept given by Chris Barker on what he calls body work. Okay. See how uh, you know these concepts are worked out in actual you know in in, in 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 different arenas in this module on sites. Body work. He in body work he includes, for instance, instance regimes of diet. Now this is all to do with the body that is performed. Okay, in a bid to show that the body is a performed body and that it is not. Uh, pre-social body, pre-cultural bodies to you know all these points here show how culture impinges on the body, culture appropriates the body. For instance, regimes of diet, okay, prescribed diets for the what they call the you know the desirable uh, and the you know the, um, the benchmark of what a fit body uh, is to look like. And, and feel like. Okay. So, we are, we have regimes of diet. Again, as I say, I would say all, um, you know, all the time, look at the, uh, the, the terminology used here, the regimes of diet. Okay. Then organ transplants, exercise, fashion, cosmetic surgery and health promotion, promotion strategies, you know, uh, which I would say is probably um, almost at its peak today. Okay, there are so many, so you know, the, again let us use Althusser's words, there are so many interpolations hailing out by different companies, okay, whether they are to do with diet, whether uh, you know, there are so many, you know, whether to, they are to do with, uh, you know, the proper exercise, uh, they are to do with, uh, you know, um, uh, contemporary fashion and the, even the health promotion strategies, okay. So, there is an increasing, uh, how should we put it? socialization, the, you know, uh, increasing uh, culturalization, if I may use the word, okay, of various, uh, uh, of various um, domains that come into the appropriation of the body through culture, including the medical sciences. So, we do not simply look at medical sciences as objective sciences that are, you know, that have given truths. We also see them, uh, see such, uh, you know, disciplines and domains as being uh, as being together with cultural practices, with regimes of power, uh, uh, you know, uh, in an attempt to make turn the body into a docile body, turn the body into a, into a commodified body. Okay, a body work, therefore, as Barker puts further, body work is to do with disciplinary power. A disciplinary power, which uh, it tells us 
that there is uh, some main there is a maintaining to be done, maintaining a desired state of embodiment. Okay, this disciplinary powers uh, kind of lead us or show us the way to to uh, a certain desired standard of a body. And on the other hand, identity. Okay, that is, uh, you also have your body identity to be transformed. Uh, you know, transfer by transforming the body through stylization. Look at these two points. A is maintaining. Okay a desired state of embodiment including health, which is given to us by what? Given to us by the disciplinary powers through, through different, uh, you know, um, different areas, different disciplines of study, which again, you know, try to discipline, so to speak, discipline the body. And secondly, again, as we saw here, there is also not simply maintaining a state of embodiment, there is also a process of trans transformation going on all the time, okay, in a bid to to, uh, to, to construct an identity of the body. The identity is done through transforming the body through stylization. And this transformation is not a one off process. Okay? It is a process that will change as the regulatory practices change, as more and more information come in uh, to us. Uh, say particularly through the medical sciences, the changes in the medical sciences uh, you know, about the body. And on the other hand, uh, the desired uh, body that is given to us by both fashion and by you know serious disciplines, disciplinary practices and research, right? The body is seen, therefore, something that is both to be maintained and to be transformed. So, the, this is the shift, okay? In medicine, right? In medical sciences. Uh, the, the initial idea of the body as isolated, right? The body as an isolated, sealed body today is seen as uh, the body as something that is biopsycho or in a biopsycho social environment. Okay, so the sealed body is body simply as a container um, that is sort of bur today burst asunder by you know another uh, you could say trope or another way of looking concept of looking at the body as something that is biological psychological sociological and uh, and and belongs to such an environment right so hence this kind of opens up right an otherwise hitherto thought sealed body isolated body uh, to an environment that is full of knowledge about you know the biological social and psychological ideas about the body. Therefore, there is a new disciplinary apparatus, right? Um, there is a, an apparatus or, or, or there is a whole, you know, there is a whole, um, there is a whole climate, okay, about the body, the climate of opinion about the body, which changes very rapidly and which hails out to us to follow these, uh, you know, um, it, uh, you know, to, to give us an idea, give us some illusion as if we are in, you know, we are in possession of the body, uh, of our bodies and we are, uh, you know, in charge of our bodies. But the reality is that, that our bodies are being con constantly made docile, subjected and disciplined by these, again, these also these new disciplinary apparatuses. The previous disciplinary, uh, uh, you know, apparatuses, the older apparatuses we talked about were the, the apparatuses in the 19th century, okay, the beginning of different, um, you could say different um, discourses uh, in science and in social sciences about the body. Today, we have these new disciplinary apparatuses. These are, for instance, health promotion advertisements on health promotion, health promotion schemes, uh, well-being for instance, well-being things like spas um, and different, different you know, uh, you know uh, the gym in uh, to which you go. Okay? So, they, uh, health, different health promotion schemes coming in from companies, from, uh, you know, from various uh, pharmaceutical companies. Then there is the medicalization of lifestyles. Okay? Uh, there is, uh, for instance, today, um, you find so many, so many companies, so many, there's a whole plethora of choices as far as, um, you know, uh, dietary supplements are concerned. Okay, there are various offerings, so to speak, <laughs> in the market, and um, the discourse is very, the discourse is very scientific. 
you will find the names of several you know uh, um, uh, several desirable uh, kind of um, uh, components that are very clearly written there and where through which you know is promised uh, say different kinds of uh, vitamins for instance different kinds of supplements so the lifestyle is also medicalized through uh, through these different offerings in the market so these new disciplinary uh, approaches are not just health promotion uh, schemes the medicalization of lifestyles um, then also there is an quite an aggressive marketing okay of the uh, of these above things the marketing is done through as we all know through media through advertisements through door to door sales okay so an aggressive marketing where you uh, are no longer looking at the body as something that is pristine and uh, only natural this as it says the sealed isolated body the body is now um, a part of the currency so to speak part of the currency of the biopsychosocial environment and uh, finally uh, these new disciplinary apparatuses they are not talking only about health the fact that you know if you are uh, a part of the you know in, in the circulation um, of of these kind of commodities or these kind of activities or offerings okay of health promotion and uh, you know a lifestyle that is increasingly being medicalized right to whether dietary supplements or even you know mainstream medicines it is also important that your attitude okay depending on how much you partake of this your attitude is also identified or seen seen you know it seems that your uh, attitude is understood in the attitude to health your attitude to life in general right your attitude to your uh, biosocial environment is 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 measured by the way uh, by the extent to to which you partake of these activities and finally this is also interestingly given a moral it is given a moral shade as if uh, you know you uh, the, it is a moral imperative you know to be partakers of uh, you know this kind of a new culture of the body a new culture of uh, the body where there are these you know newer forms of disciplinary practices and apparatuses okay that beckon to us so what we have seen uh, uh, is essentially in this in this lesson that the body is a site okay the body is an the first would say i would say the most important site where um, culture um, you know establishes its power in some of the lectures before we had reminded ourselves from time to time that cultural studies is not a descriptive okay it's not a descript is an, not an activity of description we have simply you describe things as they are the the most important um, i would say the most important component or aspect of cultural studies uh, compared to other disciplines okay is this that it seeks to even as it explores a domain say the body okay it seeks to not simply describe what is happening okay in given the discourses of the body it is also it also has this political it has this political aim of showing to us okay how power is deeply ingrained in this how politics is deeply ingrained in this how a political economy okay is deeply ingrained in something seemingly different from the social that which is the body so the body becomes a most social instrument if you remember again the term a social instrument and there are different ways in which this is played out and the latest of the, the uh, these is uh, what is called the uh, you know the new uh, biopower the new biopower which comes to us um, in a, a new disciplinary a set of disciplinary apparatuses about the body where finally even this not just health but also your attitude and your you know even your morality is uh, sort of uh, instantiated uh, depending on how far you are particles of these new schemes okay so uh, let us then discuss some of these 
points by way of you know formulating some questions. For instance, if uh, we ask this question, what is the function of framing the body? Okay, we saw that the body is, a, a, you know, in cultural studies, the body uh, a, a is framed. So, what is the function of framing the body? We, uh, the answer to this is as we had discussed before, framing the body within culture, within society, uh, is important because it establishes two things. That is structures of power, okay, and desire. They finally need to knowledge and meaning production, right. So, this is important because we are talking about the body as being you know ingrained a in studies uh, in sorry in structures of power and the body as a desiring, okay, not just a perceiving element or, or, or perceiving a vehicle or a vehicle of interpretation, so as there is a vehicle of desire, okay, um, these two things also create knowledge and meaning. Second, explain Michel Foucault's concept of docile bodies. According to Michel Foucault, our bodies are docile bodies through discourses, okay, where the in uh, the it may be explained in this way, the individual body is not the body of a person okay, or, or, or is not a person. It is a social instrument and it is manipulable, okay. it is manipulable in for various productive and even reproductive activities. So, uh, this is the important point here, it is made docile, it is made subjected okay, to regulatory practices and uh, it no longer remains uh, a co uh, simply an organic entity, it is a social instrument, the body in put in service of society. That is, there is a shift from the body as uh, you know, um, as a target of punishment through prison imprisonment, through incarceration, to a more covert disciplining or control of the body through discourse, through writing about the body. For instance, uh, writing about the body, um, you know, for instance, uh, very importantly uh, in in Foucault's scheme, through the the medical literature, the body to be prescribed and controlled through what he calls the normalizing techniques and discourses of 19th century human sciences. And as we saw, this leads to the creation of a new political anatomy. Okay, which sees the body as deeply embedded, embedded in the mechanics of power. Okay. Then what is body work? If you get a question like what is body work, how are you going to tackle it? And you look at these five or six ways of, of describing body work as given to us by Chris Barker. Body work is, is work you do on the body okay. through fashion, through regimes of diet, through cosmetic surgery in a bid to get the perfect body, okay, through very importantly uh, exercises through organ transplants, right, through organ transplants and most importantly today I would say the health promotion strategies. So, we are you know um, uh, and, and we see that all these things, I mean look at all these points here, exercise, fashion, cosmetics, so these are all to do. Uh, in, including organ transplant, this is all to all to do with commerce. It's all to do with production and consumption. Okay, and that is how the body is uh, always, already, as you may say. Okay, beginning from when the, when the baby is born, right? If you if you notice, what are the things that you know immediately the body uh, you know the body becomes part or is appropriated by by culture. Then cite a few examples of contemporary disciplinary apparatus that seek to regulate the body. These are of course, the last point um, we discuss in the slides. The new disciplinary apparatuses that you know the uh, uh, that through contemporary practices seek to kind of again convert our bodies uh, in a new way into being docile bodies are health promotion schemes, the medicalization of lifestyles, the marketing of the above and uh, you know, not just our understanding of what the healthy body is, it seems that it is also you know the attitude of the being and the morality okay, of the agent is seen, I mean it is in the sense that if you are not healthy, you are immoral. 
Okay, you are, you are not being, you are not taking, you are not taking care of your body, particularly through body work, as we saw, particularly as to the all the things are that uh, are being offered. Okay, uh, by these uh, productive activities, uh, it is as if you, if you are not, uh, you know, if you don't have the so-called desired and perfect body, then you are, uh, you know, could also be called an immoral person. So see, from the body to identity to even moral questions. Do you follow? This is how the regulatory practices, this is, this is how the commercial practices, you know, uh, um, have a hold over us. And cultural studies tries to bring this to the fore, tries to point this out to you. Okay? Uh, my, uh, my argument here would be, after looking at all this, is um, not that we realize this and then you know we, we kind of retreat from it okay uh, definitely there are there are you know the the, uh, the you know the, the respecting of the body okay the respecting the fact that we should respect our bodies maintain certain definitely certain levels of uh, of health of appearance as social beings is to be definitely desired but the important point that we learn from this is uh, you know, the very fact that we understand this making docile of the body okay, is a fact that at certain times we can uh, decide for ourselves what is the level to which we take part in these schemes or in these emotional schemes or in this you know, uh, medicalization. Uh, there is no, no clear cut answer to this, okay, it differs from individual to individual. But an important way of looking at, you know, important reason for looking at the body through cultural studies uh, is this, that one does not, you know, um, one is not so enmeshed, okay. The body will always be social, the body will always be cultural, the body is always already appropriated as I said, once the child, the baby is born, right. So one has to, this is an important word in cultural studies as we know, negotiate, right. And these negoti negotiations are obviously done in different levels and in different ways by people. Okay. So, thank you for being um, you know with, with me um, in this lecture or lesson on the body. In the next lecture, we are going to look at something which we do not probably uh, think about so much and this is we are going to look at space, right. We are, lo are going to look for instance like in body, we saw the body, mean, uh, most of us see the body simply as an organic entity. Also, with space, we look at the, you know, uh, look at space as simply a geographical entity. So we will see how space is also social. And after, in following that, in the lecture on time, which is the space is a site, time is also a site. Time is not something to do only with physics. Okay, time, history, these are also, um, you know, it wouldn't be too much to say that these are also cultural and social constructs. Okay, so um, I look forward to being with you in the next lecture on space. Thank you.